pleasure to be here this afternoon to share with you uh, my research and the some are just my experience then, uh, during the past three and a half years. <coughs> um, the subject were the perspective of local environmental study under the green economics. Um, I'm trying to present this is probably first from the green uh, economics. Maybe of you may be familiarized with that. That is the bring up by the UNEP in the year 2011, just in the year before the real past And in the green economics, it has pointed out a total of 10 sectors that are important for the transition to the green economy. And in my presentation, I will talk three of them, the waste, renewable energy, and the building. And the, finally, I will talk about or trying to answer this, uh, whether or not it is the stage of crisis or opportunity. But most of all, I think it will be, we are in the transition, in the turning point. Uh, 
uh, chemicals for the pesticide law. That's, that's regulating close to about three hundred. But in the reach, right now there are about thirty thousand chemicals. And the, in Taiwan, the Labor Affairs Commission trying to establish the database. And the EPA is also trying to. We have about close to uh, maybe eighty thousand. But only 20,000 are overlap, are overlap this region. That means around 60,000 chemicals. We don't have any MSDS information or enough MSDS, not to mention the reproductive or the toxicity. So we need to uh, have a good management of these chemicals. And the best way probably we are trying to see, just like most countries, that we have the Taiwan reach. And we have the data base and uh, to have these chemicals to be available to each uh, responsible agency and uh, to have a building uh, management. And uh, to do this, maybe we need a dedicated data base as well as the chemical agency. And uh, hopefully in the transition of the like, Environmental Protection Administration to the Department of Environmental and the nat Natural Resources, we hope to see that. But for the global wide, the renewable energy, this is from the UNEP Green Economic Report. We all know that energy efficiency is probably the most effective way and the immediate way to improve it. And especially in the building, up against transport in the industrial as well as And I will try to talk about the buildings later on. But for the IEA has point out, if we want to reduce the CO2 reduction in year 2050 to the level of 2005. We also need to have the decarbonized power generation. That's include nuclear energy, renewable energy, etc. And also the CCS. Carbon capture and storage, that's accounting for 20%. And Taiwan has adopted the same strategy, except for the CCS. Here we only have 2%. Only 2%. And global wise, it is 20%. And this is the schematic for the carbon capture and storage. You just collect this carbon dioxide from the different uh, uh, large emission source. And then transport to the desired storage place. We'll go to the underground or go to the sea or under the sea. And this thing not very natural because we all know in the nature the carbon cycle involves the biological conversion or the geological conversion, but no such direct storage. And the, this CCS was brought up in year 2005 in the IPCC report. But six years later, a new approach to accelerate the deployment of the CCS is called the carbon capture use and the storage. And this is especially has been the focusing point in the channel. And the reason is that it used, just as I have pointed out to you, the utilization of the carbon is the natural process, biologically or geologically. But besides that, we will call there's no way, the no natural way or the anthropic way, or the chemical way. We could convert the CO2 after being captured. This could be utilized as the oxygen and the carbon source, or utilized as a carbon source. For example, to prepare methanol or the formic acid. Or even we could do the bioprocessing, or to mimic the nature to do the photoconversion. And the definite last choice is the storage. So this is what the utilization is all about. In Taiwan, we are trying to push the CCS. It is expensive. It is not easy to promote this. So the only way we have this opportunity is during those big development projects. For example, this is the only analysis report on the difference of the environmental impact. Because the English country is very strong. From uh, six now sub gray color for 6, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 
on the about a year and a half ago, Bomo Sapito Chemical uh, is proposing to collaborate with the great uh, international chemical company, uh, very famous in manufacturing the SPC, that's the high value added product. So they have to do this uh, report. And during this uh, assessment meeting, actually, the Guoguang Sihua was just being vetoed out. So, in order to get this to uh, approval and to get the, <coughs> we, the task force finally has go to several conclusions. And the one is probably to do the compensation reduction in the defense of these air pollutant, extra air pollutant, water, and uh, uh, greenhouse gases. For example, for this extra air pollutant, shouldn't be cruise. Water usage, if you use one ton, you should reduce two ton. For the greenhouse emission gas, if you emit one ton, you should reduce 1.5 ton. So by this way, that will be uh, mercury acceptable because they could get what they want. But we could also improve the environment. But most important for the GHG emission, it is not easy to do. So they are asked to do the CSUS. So they will build a, a plane that will be capable of to treat 26,000 tons of carbon dioxide per year. And the least they will work chemical engineering use for, for the food grade carbon dioxide. I think this is the first CCS. Not a CCS, I should say a CCU in Taiwan. That would be in not in any lab scale or in pilot scale. That would be in the plane scale. And the way in our group we have also do the CCU in from year 2006, probably with the chemist, the chemical engineer, to do the recovery, the capture, the utilization, and also the fixation and mineralization. And what we think the opportunity. One of the opportunities here, maybe we could consider the maximum economy. And this is uh, brought by the Nobel Prize Dr. Uh, O'Brien in the And uh, so we have done a lot of catalyst development. The third one is the building. And uh, this is also from the Green Economic Report. And the, if energy supply, transport, building, industry, agriculture, forestry, and waste. And the what you could see here, this bar graph represent the opportunity to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. And the building is among the number one. Among the number one. And there are many opportunities here. But in order to implement this, you have to have some goal. Um, in the EPB also doing the environmental impact assessment, we are trying to bring this the concept. People probably are familiar with the zero carbon building. That means for buildings like it will be carbon neutral in the entire empire. <coughs> right now there's only one, that is to my knowledge at the National Chengkong University. And that there are many green buildings in Taiwan, but this is the volunteer or system. And the full of green building. It is only capable of reducing the carbon emission by 20%. And our immediate goal is to reduce by 50%, what we call a low carbon building. So you need a tool. So we have an Excel base, a very simple calculation tool to ask the building GHG emission. And the, the outcome of this, of, of this tool should be used by the EIA in certain funds. And this is based on the life cycle analysis, 40 years. This might be too short, but I unfortunately is the building in Taiwan's life. In the European country, maybe 80 years. And they will cover construction and the operational starch. And the, by a simple calculation, uh, the user only had to input a parameter. So you have the carbon emission, that is the environmental loading. And the, you also implement the mitigation measure you take, then you will have a carbon reduction value. So you could divide this to get a carbon reduction efficiency. And this will be an index to be used by the IEA committee member. Um, this is the uh, 
factor for the operation that has to be taken into consideration to calculate environmental loading from the plant carbon sink, soil carbon sink, the waste uh, transportation, the construction material, manufacturing and transportation, etc. That's during the construction stage. Then during the operational stage, the daily energy use, the, the water, and also the waste, and also the transportation. So this will be the carbon emission. And the similarly, you can calculate the mitigation measure taken to calculate the carbon reduction. And then taking this ratio, you could have a carbon reduction index. And by this way, we could find out for different projects, maybe the larger carbon emission factor will be very. So by that way, the architecture or the engineer, he could redesign his uh, construction. And this is new, at least to my knowledge. I think the first one we have taken this is the year 2010. And uh, I was chairman of like, the task force on, on commission. And this is a Taipei Land Ground Exhibition Center for just the Taipei Dalang Guan uh, and this is probably just now, uh, just not finished yet. From the newspaper, it just started construction. And the original, the design is no green building at all. But after, I think, four times of the meeting, and the discussion, and the without adding too much cost, they promised this would be a silver green building. And this is the uh, just uh, past, the past force meeting. That will be an international hotel in the new Banchow Station Special District 2. And this is the picture of this district. And this is a synthetic image of this international hotel. This one is, I would say it's oversized because <coughs> the Google government has parked then a lot of the floor area with additional bonus, etc. So the, com <laughs> the committee member, I think one way is that because this is oversized, then the one way to make a balance is to ask them to get a go eco hotel label from the EPA. And the none has this yet in Taiwan, but I doubt they might refute in the general meeting. <clears throat> but at least we are trying. And the list is also from the National Taiwan University. <coughs> they have project with eight building, new buildings construction, and they also has just in the past. And the, again, we have just to list the meeting discussion and the, to enhance them from original, probably just qualified or the copper, then will be to the silver. So with this tool, it is good. We could achieve uh, the reduce the carbon emission from the uh, building. And uh, the last I will say is that the, the crisis or the opportunity lies the scene of this uh, workshop. I think at this time we are at the turning point. At the turning point. For example, uh, I, I, I'm a chemist, but from here I think you won't be able to see this work should be done by a chemist. I think most of the audience here should be capable to contribute to the energy product integration and to making the best use of the all the resources, all the resources. So I will con conclude my talk with this, is that uh, I think there are crises there by the climate change. This is not a fiction anymore. This is a scientific evidence, very solid scientific evidence. But the problem is the, where are the opportunities? Although I have presented some of my personal learning experience, and the, some of my personal research interests, but I think we are still at a turning point or the, at a transition. We probably still have to have more discussion, more evidence to determine where is the right scientific world to focus on, especially in Taiwan. We don't have many resources here. And uh, a very good reference is uh, the real plus 20. 
the year after, I think I just from the UNEP website. The day yesterday and the, the day before yesterday is a three-day conference. So maybe after this uh, workshop, we could see what it all comes from here. So I think that will be a very good reference. And uh, with this, I thank you for your attention.